So those of you who are just you know lusting after a three D printer, we can talk to his name Logan. Logan. Lieb. L O E B E. L O E B E. He actually works in my department in my group. You stole him from me. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so so I asked in order to get this through, we started soliciting pictures of ham shacks, or workbenches is a better better statement. And so it's like, okay, everybody, send us in pictures of your workbenches that shows us <laughs> that you really are doing projects at home and you really could use parts and you really could use test equipment and things like that. And so, I don't know, I got 30 or 40 of these and uh, uh, it was, we packaged it up and sent it to, you know, the big man, John, and he said, yeah, okay, that's not a problem. And everybody went, really? This is good. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to... Uh, blast through a few of these pictures because I thought you guys would enjoy seeing hardware from you know a variety of places. We want names. <laughs> <laughs> some those are mine. Alan, you want to talk to this one? Uh, yes, so this is a lab of a, a very good friend of mine in Chicago area. And uh, every time I'm in town I get in there and he has everything you can possibly imagine. He used to be the uh, vice president of US Robotics Wouldn't you have loved to have a lab like that when you're going to college? <laughs> yeah, that would be wonderful. And and yes, if you know, for a certain fee, I can identify a majority of these pictures. But um, <laughs> but yeah, some of us have been using some things that have been around for a while. And there's, you know, this kind of project is just a really a lot of fun. Now that's a clean station, isn't it? Must not work here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just today or just, just this month anyway, uh, EDN or Double E Times or somebody came through with a comment about is a messy desk a sign of a creative individual or not. It's kind of an interesting article. Some of these are messier than others. Some of those are pretty neat. I believe that's the last one? Yeah. Okay, Charlie. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Why? I'm glad you asked. Here's a piece of paper right here. Send it around. Let's show them, show them a little bit of interest. So I'll put your name on this list right here if you're willing to spend a couple hours sorting equipment. Okay, the 3 watt whisper station is up and running 24 hour, 24 seven. Uh, so if you get on whisper map, uh, you can look for N0CXX and you can see where you're reaching around the world. We hit every two minutes, we change frequency. So we're going across all the uh, available bands. So sometimes 80 is open and sometimes 10 is open. Um, all the radios are up at N0CXX. Uh, all the antennas are up except I stopped by yesterday and the STEP IR, I could tune it to a frequency, but I wasn't hearing anything. It said the SWR is five to one. So it's like the coax got stepped on. So come up and use the station, the vertical's right. Uh, this is kind of interesting, as I was going in there yesterday, I always wondered what these little pipes were on the, on the antenna, now I know. <laughs> Those are bird mounts. <laughs> They're evenly spaced on each one of them. Anyway, okay, uh, as you saw in some of those pictures, people, somebody 15 years ago went through and sorted a boatload of parts up there and labeled them. So if you got a project that needs some, most of them are lead, leaded parts, uh, you can go up there and use them. There's LS245. I don't know what one of those are. That's kind of interesting. So that parts, those, those parts are available. If you need parts, just go up there and use those things. Okay, what needs to be done at CXX? Uh, Jones has purchased two 
uh, dual band verticals to replace the two uh, that are up there because we're all our radios are dual band. So he wanted to check that out. Uh, I just added the step IR beam. We've got two stacks of HF80. One of them works, the other one doesn't. So if somebody is interested in working HF80, it would be nice to get that second stack running. Uh, the D-Star antennas catch the edge of the, the uh, building right there going out to the uh, tower. So the signal's not very good. So we need to lift them up 10, 15 feet on each end. And I saw this in uh, QST. You know, what are you waiting for? You can send them money, or if we could figure out how to remote our own stations, we can do that. So that you as a club member can use our equipment without having to go into the station. I mean, we've got all kind of equipment, we just need a workable solution. Okay, and there's some S5 stuff I've been gathering there by the door, so if you're interested in any of that stuff, old uh, computer frames or, oh, if you really want that nifty box there, you can have it. Otherwise, I'm going to haul it down and it's going to all disappear. Uh, what else is happening? Ah! Mike is supposed to come here. Oh! Oh, there you are. All right. You got it, man. You're on. Now you get the nifty little... Clipper, because he's recording this with this thing. Really? Yeah. I think so you can hear me when I do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he can. He can hear you. And drop it in your pocket or clip it somewhere. Sure, you bet. All right, is this on? Cool, we got it. Here's buttons. Push that sideways. You know what? I'm gonna do this and. How do I go back up? The other button. There we go. Okay. All right. So first off, with the shirts, I mean. Uh, in uh, talking with the uh, cotton gallery, and right now we're getting together, uh, getting it whittled down for shirt styles and the costs and whatnot. So when I have that information, I'll uh, have the email list, and if you guys want, if there's anybody else from the last meeting who didn't get signed up that we had an interest in a club shirt, I've got the list here. You can add your name and your email address to it and uh, we'll get you on there. Um, if I were to guess, based on what we did five years ago, the cost of the shirts are probably gonna be on the order of like $28, thereabouts. Again, when I get a more detailed uh, uh, cost list, we'll, uh, I'll, I'll broadcast, that, broadcast that to everyone. Okay, so we've been working over the winter and work continues on at uh, main plant. What we've been set up as a work night every Thursday night at 4.30. Um, Come, come if you want. Stay as long as you, as long as you can. Everyone's welcome, uh, and that's everything that we need to get ready so that this next spring we can do an antenna lift and put the uh, new step by our beam up on our Ron 45 tower. So what I have here is a uh, list of various tasks that we've assigned out to people, and if you see something on there that says that you look at and say, "Hey, I wouldn't mind doing that," don't be shy about uh, stepping up. I've got a few things assigned to myself. Uh, you got, I see my name up there in a few spots. I'm, I'm not really married to any one of them, so if you want to pick it up, that's fine, because if you do, I'll put my name on one of these. So we've got a long list of things to do, and you know, um, I think it's doable. My goal is that by May time frame, when we definitely have some nice weather and we guaranteed the snow's gone, that we can do the lift and get this thing all up and running and... Uh, be on the air. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, let me back up a little bit here, if you look under the to-do list one of two, the uh, third uh, item down where it says design, procure, and build satellite comm hardware, Vince Lachavio and uh, Vince Vila are working right now on getting an ASL rotor and some beams installed up on the top of building 166 and we're hoping sometime later this year possibly is getting uh, some uh, SATCOM capability at the main plant shack. So they, they're spearheading that right now. Okay. Excuse me? The plural of Vince, should that be Vince I? Thank you, Lawrence. I was wondering that myself. The Vince, the Vince I, well, well, it is now. The Vince I are working on, on uh, 
They've uh, done a great job in getting some beams cleaned up and getting the mounting hardware. We've got some rotors and rotor controllers that are ready to be installed. Um, and now we just need a, uh, external cable harnesses from the outside. Because we've got all of the control cabling done from inside the shack to the outer wall. And so it's just a matter of just getting the uh, control cables made that go from the outer wall up to the top of uh, Building 166. That's what's going on at main plant. Um, so as an example, we've got, this just shows an example just of the RF, uh, RF coaxial feed lines of the cables that need to be made that we're identifying. Mr. Jones, uh, Steve Jones has offered very graciously to do the fabrication of them once we get the connectors and the cable bulk material uh, procured. So uh, plenty of work to be done there. Um, another item of note at main plant is that speaking of inventory disposal that Brian was talking about a few moments ago is that uh, one of the technicians at main plant informed me, uh, sent me that picture, that, that picture you see in the upper right hand corner. He sent it to my, my phone and said, hey Mike, what's this rig? And I said, well, it's a 51J4 receiver. Why? He said, well, you might want to come down by test equipment, the pool, because it's in a skid mark destroy. So we saved it from there, uh, from that, and uh, the bottom pictures are what pictures that I took after I opened it up. It's actually relatively clean inside. We powered it up. Uh, it's a bit noisy, but it does receive signals, and so if anybody's looking for a nice project down at Main Plant, I like to see this guy uh, gone, gone over with a fine-tooth comb and put him back on the air. Uh, see you next. And the last thing I have here is just a little update on the Collins 233D restoration project. This is the um, this is that uh, AM transmitter post World War II, 1940 mid 40s vintage. Uh, this is the one that the Collins uh, Amateur Radio Club and the um, Museum Club, thank you, Museum Club went in halfsies on and bought off of eBay. And long story made short is that this has been an ongoing project over in the old Com Central transmitter room on the east side of building 120. And uh, the latest uh, accomplishment is that uh, through Jules Yoder and uh, Jim Jones's joint efforts, he got the auto tune up and working. So you can actually walk up to this. I'm hoping for next, uh, next uh, meeting that we have is I'll try to take some video and throw it into these slides here of the auto-tune actually working because it is, it is a minor marvel to watch this thing go. So the next uh, stumbling block that we ran into here is we're trying to get uh, RF smoke out of the exciter and right now we're um, tracking down uh, control and uh, bias supply inter, uh, signal flow issues but those will be overcome soon I am sure. So if you're looking for something fun to do there, uh, Jim Jones is the one to contact on that project. Question, Lawrence? Oh, yes. Uh, Miraculously, nobody has been electrocuted yet. Okay, yeah. Nobody has tripped over wires, cracked their skull. That you can prove in a court of law. That is true. Um, for so, This has been a lot of fun. For someone for me, for my day job, I mean, I primarily have done translators and receivers, which high power is, you know, a whole half a watt. You know, you go into this thing and the low voltage power supplies is 208 volt three phase. And you've got someone there like Jim Jones and will be working on this thing. And so you want to fire it up and you want to probe around and see what's going on. And he's reaching into these racks and thumping this and thumping that and looking around here. And I said, Jim, you do know that we have 208 volt three phase flowing all over the stuff. And his response is, ah, that's no problem. The plate supply is turned off. <laughs> so, so, so the 4200 volt plate supply may be off. But in any event, um, there, this has, Jim has been a little despondent, I think he's been a little bit discouraged because he was hoping we'd be further along than we are at this point in the game. But myself, from a third party who's been helping out with this, I think it has been remarkable the progress that we've made on this. And this thing will, will be operating on the air before it's all said and done. I guarantee you that. And that's it. Right. Then Did you want this, Charlie? Sure, yes, I will look in, yes, I will look for, to choose a There's style of polo shirt that has pockets. You got Okay, uh. Charlie, you need these? Um.
I don't think so. He's gonna. Well, maybe we can pick that up. You had over the uh, speaker a moment ago. I know. I just unplugged it. Um, the problem is my player here won't jump forward for some reason anymore. So we want to go to 40 minutes, 40 minutes into it. So we're doing a fast preview here. Of some jokes in the intro. I can talk about it a little bit. Yeah, why don't you do that? Okay, hold on a second, Rod. Yeah, get get to get him the microphone. All that you want to Where you get your? Where's the ruffle? Let's do this one step at a time. Yeah, well, this one's being recorded for a posterity. Flip that just about anywhere. And this is for all of us here. Okay. Here you go. All righty. Uh, I might make a couple comments on that 233D too, because uh, I think it's going to take him a couple minutes here. Uh, that transmitter is three kilowatts a carrier, so when it's fully AM modulated, we're, we're up to around, uh, what would that be, nine or ten kilowatts PEP. It'll be illegal on the ham band, so. Uh, to keep things uh, kosher with the FCC, uh, the plan is to invent and build a, uh, I think it's, uh, I forget the exact number, it's a 9 dB pad that'll take 3 kilowatts a carrier down to 375 watts. And at the same time, I think this is a 200 ohm balanced output, so we'll also convert it down to 50 ohms. Uh, and squirt it up to the roof for an antenna. So it will be legal, but if anybody's interested in uh, doing some design work with nichrome wire and keeping inductances down, why uh, this will be an interesting project to, uh, to do that. Uh, what we're going to see here, if he... Are we allowed to have a fan? Pardon? Are we allowed to have a fan? Yeah, there's fans. We can, yeah, we can cool it. It's an engineering problem. <laughs> Yeah, are there any? Uh, 